Shalom. Most High in Christ bless is Captain Yan, and to my right, Soldier Nathaniel. Today we're going over your Christian church. A lot of us that are in the nation of Israel, we all came from the Christian church. Most of us came from the Christian church. Some of us came from being Muslims. Some of us was five percenters. Some of us were atheists. Some of us were just completely lost. But a lot of us come from the Christian church. So you at home watching right now may be saying to yourself, well, how do I know my Christian church is teaching me the wrong way? So we're going to bring a few scriptures that will show you this isn't the place for me to be. I need to get out of here because the Bible says prove all things. All right. Let's start with Hebrews 10 verse 26. Does your Christian church fellowship? More than likely they do. So right now you're probably thinking, I don't got to leave my church. We fellowship every Sunday. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Yes. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of yourself, of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So the Bible <clears throat> commands us to fellowship. The Bible commands us to fellowship. So that's one of the laws in the scriptures. Now, here's another law in the scriptures that you need to ask yourself. Is your church teaching you this? Let's go to the day of worship. What day do you go to church? Oh, I know. Wait, what day did you go to church when you grew up? It was actually Saturday. It was a, it was a Saturday. Okay, so you was in the spirit. Yeah. Wait, was sort it of. Friday at night to Saturday at night? No. Okay, so all right, all right, all right. <laughs> but you at home, more than likely, you're fellowshipping on a Sunday. For example, me, when I grew up in a Christian church, it was a Sunday. But the Bible commands us, listen. Go to um, Leviticus 20, uh, no, sorry, Exodus 20, verse 8. Exodus 20, verse 8. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Some of you listening are Jehovah Witness, Baptist, Pentecost, uh, Seventh-day Adventist. Seventh Adventist, Episcopalian, non-denominational, Catholics, Protestant, all kind of religions. But guess what? All of them are false. Read this. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt do no, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So it says, but the seventh day is the day of rest. When is the seventh day? Saturday. Like in Spanish, sabado. The Bible says on the seventh day, God rested. So what's Sunday? The first day of the week. So if you are fellowshipping on a Sunday, you are following God falsely. Now, the Bible says he rested on the seventh day. So guess what? On the Sabbath, you are commanded to fellowship. That is a law that on the seventh day, we are commanded, like Hebrews 10 says, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. Now, we just knocked out a ton of religions right there. Right. So now some of you Jehovah Witnesses think you got it. Some of you Jehovah's Witnesses think you are still in the clear. Not at all. Listen good. Listen good. Go to... 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. In your church, do you have a female pastor? Because the Bible commands us that a woman is not to be guiding the nation. Let's read 1 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. We're just giving you a few scriptures on basic things that once you see this, something should go off in your head saying, nah, this is off. I shouldn't be here. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. The Bible says to let the woman learn in what? Silence. In what? In all subjection. In what? In silence. In silence. The Bible says the woman are to learn in silence. That's the New Testament. So the Bible has given us the basic laws. But guess what? In your church, who may be running the congregation? You may have a female pastor. That's right. You may have a Juanita Bynum's Jr., you understand? You may have that female pastor that's guiding the church. The Bible says that's out of order. 
We're going to give you another. Can you give verse 12? Oh, yes, yes, verse yes. Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. What did the Bible just say? But I suffer not a woman to teach. So it is out of order if you have a female teaching the whole body of believers. The Bible condemns that. The Bible says that the women are to teach the younger woman how to love their husbands. Go to Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. When you go into the church, automatically there should be an order in the dress code. Now, when you hear the scripture, think about this. Is this my church? Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Mm -hmm. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says men should not wear women's clothes and women should not wear men's clothes. Now, are there women in the church wearing pants? That's against God's law. That's a sin. The Bible commands us that we must keep God's laws. I already know. I already know. You already you already clicked X on YouTube. You already turned off the video. You don't want to watch it no more. Your feelings are hurt. So what? If you believe on this Bible, you're going to change. That's it. It's as simple as that. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Right. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Right. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now we're going to get another scripture. When you walk into the church, are there images on the walls? Let's go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Are there images on the wall? Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. Are there images of a white Messiah? You may say, oh, my church don't have any images. But guess what? Guess what? The image that's in the mind of the pastor is... Esu Cristo is a Caucasian image of Jesus. That is not the image of Jesus Christ. Let's read the image of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. Mm -hmm. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow, uh -huh. and his eyes were as the flame of fire, uh -huh. and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace. So it said his hair was woolly. Black people have woolly hair. And it says his feet like unto fine brass, fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. What color is that? Black. Black. So Christ was what? A very dark skinned man. So guess what? Color matters. When you walk in these churches and you see white images of angels, of God and of Christ, that's a white supremacy church. Get mad if you want. Now. Let's go to Leviticus 21 and verse 5. Now, let's say your pastor isn't a female, but let's say your pastor is a male. Here's another way to tell if your church is teaching you correctly or if your pastor is showing you the right example. Leviticus 21 verse 5. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. The Bible said it is against God's laws to bald your head. Read on. Neither shall they shave off the Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. We are commanded to have beards. We are commanded to have beards. This Bible is a true book. We are the Israelites. You understand? We are God's chosen people. So these laws are very important. And guess what? They're still in effect. Next, we read the beard. We read dress code. We read assembly. We read day of worship. What about the dietary law? Is your pastor telling you you can eat whatever you want? That's a lie. Leviticus 11 and verse 46. Leviticus 11 and verse 46. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 46. This is the law of the beasts and of the fowl and of every living creature that moveth in the waters and of the every creature that creepeth upon the earth to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. Mm -hmm. And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. So that law of keeping the commandments concerning diet is still in effect. So I hope you're paying attention to this. I hope you're writing these down. But I know what you're thinking. You're saying to yourself, the laws of God are done away with. Did you learn that in your church? Yeah, I did. 
We all learn that, that the laws of God are done away with. We're going to show you they're not done away with. They're still in effect. That's what separates the Israelites from a lot of these Christians. That's why what are we doing? We're trying to reach out to you pastors. We're trying to let you know you must keep God's commandments. Now, let's go to Romans 9. Your church may be saying that all nations can be saved. That is not true. All nations cannot be saved. Go to Romans chapter 9 and verse 3. Romans chapter 9 verse 3. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ. Come on. For my brethren, uh -huh. my kinsmen, right. according to the flesh, mm -hmm. who are Israelites, mm -hmm. to whom pertaineth the adoption. What belongs to the Israelites? The adoption, Christ dying on the cross. And the glory. The kingdom of heaven. And the covenant. And you know what's heavy about that? When you read Revelation 21, it says the 12 gates has the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel with the names of the 12 apostles. You don't read all nations. You read Israel. Read on. And the covenants. The old covenant and the new covenant pertains to the Israelites. And the giving of the law. The giving of the law was only made to the Israelites. And the service of God. The service of God, meaning us keeping the commandments, was made for the Israelites. And the promises. The promises of God to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The promises that God gave us was made to the Israelites. Who are the fathers? Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Christ didn't come for all nations. Christ came for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Read. Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Read on. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. Come on. For they are all not all Israel. For they are. For they are all not all no, Israel. Right. Wait. For they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Read on. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham. Are they all children? Read on. But in Isaac shall the seed be called. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Listen. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. Is this the Bible that we're reading? Yes, yes. This is why you must learn from the Israelites. We will teach you precept upon precept, line upon line. We are not making anything up. Now, in your church, we just showed you all nations can't be saved. In your church, is there order? Is your pastor teaching you that in the home it's a 50-50? Hmm. Let's find out what God says. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is who? The man. What about 50-50? The head of the woman is the man. God has given power of the God has given the man power over the woman. So this is an order in the church. So in your church, if you're learning that we're equal, that male and female are equal, that husband and wife are 50-50, that's a lie. Because God says the head of the woman is the man. Now, in your church, go to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. Are there lesbians and homosexuals openly in the church, in the choir, singing? Are there? Do you see that in the church? Well, let's see what God's law says about that. Read this. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Uh -huh. They shall surely be put to death. So you hear what the law says? The law says that the Bible is against homosexuality and lesbianism. And in your church, a lot of you, you clearly see the homosexual. You clearly see the lesbian. But... Are we saying that lesbians and, and homosexuals can't repent? That's not what we're saying. They can repent. But your church must be teaching them repentance. Must be teaching if you do not change your life, you cannot fellowship here. We cannot let you live that lifestyle without correcting you. You understand? When you join the nation of Israel, when you join, we teach you the laws to help cleanse you. All right, so let's get Romans chapter 10, last scripture. Romans chapter 10. So when did a lot of these religions start, brothers and sisters? When we were in slavery. 
The so-called white man taught us how to fear God. The so-called white man taught us to be Baptists, taught us to be Mormons, taught us to be Pentecostals, taught us to be Lutherans, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah Witness. We learn these religions in slavery. And that's why the scripture says this, Romans chapter 10 and verse 3. Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And going about to establish their own righteousness. That's what these churches are. They have established their own righteousness. And to make you believe they're teaching you the fear of God. But they're not. That's why the Israelites are here. We are going to teach you correctly. We're going to show you thus saith the Lord. That's why all most Israelites... We all, most of us came out of the Christian church. So Lord's will, we hope these scriptures were easy for you to understand. We went through a, a simple step-by-step -step guide of, do you see these sins in your church? And if so, leave. All right. Shalom. of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.